Okay, I think this will be everyone. So I'll, I'll start by saying uh, welcome everyone to this week's rendition of Connection Wednesdays. Uh, today we'll be looking at how Idea Statica was used by Kean and Steel on the NSC award-winning project Curra Racecourse. So we'll be covering the constraints of the project, how the struggles were overcome and optimised using the software, and we'll be paying particular attention to the roof mega joint. Presented today is myself, Ryan Baker, sales engineer for Idea Statica UK. And with me is Costis, who's the support manager, and he'll be giving you a technical run through of the scheme. Questions are going to be answered at the end uh, in the Q&A section. Uh, but we'd encourage everyone to submit their questions as they go through via the GoToWebinar control panel. If you're not familiar with this format, just simply click on the text box beneath the questions tab and enter your question. So onto the scheme. The Curra is an internationally recognised horse racing venue in County Kildare in Ireland. It's described as the spiritual home of Irish horse racing and for good reason. There's evidence to suggest chariot racing was held here all the way back in 60 AD. So we know it's a venue of major cultural significance for the Irish and horse racing enthusiasts alike. Now, Curra um, comes from the Irish language word Curruck, meaning place of the running horse. The first recorded horse race here took place back in the 1720s, a time when the region was most associated with Ireland's wealthiest families. The Curra was formally recognised as a venue by, or as a horse racing venue by Act of Parliament in 1868. And in reality, we know more horse racing was done uh, long before that. A variation of the Irish Derby was, complete, was competed here from 1817. The images you can see on the screen um, show the Curra through the ages. So on the left, we have uh, two images from the 19th century and the latest development you can see on the right. I'll take this opportunity to thank Kin and Steele for sharing all of these details with us. Uh, they were involved in the project to design the steel connections and direct various buildings, including the new Spectator Grandstand. Uh, Costas will go through more about the scheme shortly. But just to put into context who Kin and Steele are, they're a family run business established in the late 80s and now can be considered one of Ireland's uh, leading structural steel firms with their core services, including design engineering, steel fabrication, steel erection, cladding and roof metal decking, floor metal decking, castellated beams and fire protection painting. It's also worth mentioning that Keen and Steel are also renowned for offering super lightweight or a super lightweight beam option known as uh, the SIN beam, which utilises a corrugated steel web to add strength whilst reducing the overall weight of the beam. I'll now pass you over to Costis, who will go through the scheme. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, can you please confirm that you can see my screen? Nice one. So I would also like to welcome everyone from my side. Without further delay, move on to the details of the CARA race course uh, structure, where many interesting items are contained from an engineering point of view. I would also like to strongly advise uh, for anyone who is interested for further details to watch the original presentation video from iStructy Island, where Michael Orr, IACOM's principal engineer, presents the project in detail. Uh, I think that it's worth mentioning that we also use this video as a source of information. Uh, in this webinar, we will focus on specific elements of the grandstand steel roof, uh, the roof was fabricated and erected by Kiernan. And in this slide, uh, you can see a plan view of the overall project. 
Today we will focus on the, on the steel roof of the grandstand. The grandstand is the part of the structure that is highlighted with a yellow color. And uh, we can also see that there is a blue outline which denotes the projection of the steel roof. Uh, some statistics that are worth noting is that the area of the blue outline is about 7,200 square meters and its total weight is about 1,100 tons. Uh, to put some more context, I uh, would like to describe the structural system that supports this structure, which is composed from typical trusses. Uh, the typical trusses have a cantilevering span of 26 meters and a back span of 10. At the two edges of this structure, there are two different truss configurations. Uh, the smaller one is called the east spine truss with a cantilevering span of 30 meters and a back span of 12. And the other one is the west spine truss, which has a cantilevering length of 41.5 meters and the back, and the back span of 15.5. Uh, in this slide, I have these three trusses displayed for comparison, one below the other. And today we will demonstrate connections from the top one. Uh, specifically, these are the top and the bottom nodes from the region of the truss that is marked with an orange outline. Now, to provide some more context about the project, we need to revisit the design constraints that proved important and practically led the design process. Uh, IACOM, which is uh, the company that did the original structural design, tried to control the behavior of the roof from the very early stages of design. One of the most challenging parts was the architectural requirement that the roof should be flat after completion of the construction. And this part proved to be quite tricky. As you can see in this drawing, which comes from a linear analysis, the leading edge of the flat roof moves by 214 mils which is quite larger than the deformation of the rest of the structure. After many design iterations uh, with Kernan, we have to, I think that it's interesting noting that this value was increased up to 400 mils. Now this con constraint is something that could potentially be influenced by the connection design and the erection stages. This is why Kiernan and ICOM worked together in several design iterations to figure out the construction sequence and the relevant details and make sure that after erection, the, the roof will remain flat. You also have to keep in mind something that is very important that this has, uh, all this happens in a really congested six month window. Now let's move to the nodes. And in this drawing, I am displaying the positions of the two critical nodes that are the topic of today's webinar. These nodes are outlined with the orange rectangles and uh, they are located in the west spine truss, which is the one with the cantilevering span of 41.5 meters. 
and of course the most interesting one is the top node which uh, which is war uh, uh, for which it is worth noting that it weighs up to 27 tons so let's jump to the actual models uh, now this is the model of the top connection and it is evident at this point that the node is quite complex and I dare to say that only a, th a 3D model provides the correct perspective of the problem because we have 12 incoming members and if we include the column we have a connection uh, with a total count of 13 members. Now let me display the conceptual design of this uh, connection and shortly we will discuss the design decisions uh, that had to be taken in order to create this model. So first we have this gusset which which is located in plane to the truss. Uh, now all other gussets are welded on this one. Uh, this is the gusset which is which is in the plane of the backspan. Please, it is worth noting that this gusset is slightly inclined. Uh, also, Kiernan had to move members to the outside. They had to move this clip, these clips to the outside, which is something that we will discuss shortly. And because they had to, to move them away from the node, they also had to stabilize these gussets with these lateral plates here. Another aspect of the model is that they're using pins, which is also something that we will discuss later. Now, let me also move to the bottom node. Again, it's much simpler than the top node, but still, it's quite complex. We have six incoming members and the column, so we have a total count of seven members. Uh, in the original proposal, the column was embedded in a CHS section, but for the reasons that we will discuss later, it was not an option to use it, and Kiernan had, had to come up uh, with this solution. So, to explain more, let me move back to the presentation. And in this slide, I, I'm displaying the original design proposal from IACOM. Uh, again, I would like to remind you that IACOM did a constructability assessment from the, from, from uh, the early stages of the design, but the final design is quite different. So let me display an overlay of the final design on top of the initial proposal uh, so that you can see how different they are. Uh, they are. And uh, before moving and discussing the details of this change, uh, it's worth mentioning that according to Kiernan, the preliminary design was sound in theory. But from a fabrication point of view, they had to change certain things. Remember that they also had a very tight deadline. Uh, now, let's see how Idea Statica moved, uh, 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 how Idea Statica helped this iterative design process. 
So first, let's move back to the model. Uh, so to put all these members in place, Kernan had to move them around. They were moving each member and they were assessing the impact of this movement on the joint. They were solving it and then they were deciding if it's okay. They had to do this in several iterations. Now, Idea Statica, uh, the modeler, helps us to speed up this process because it's quite easy to move things around. So, for example, if I need to modify the position of this clip here, I'm just clicking on it. I see its properties and say that I want to move it towards the node. So I'm reducing this distance. Now, the clip moves closer to the node, but this complex gasset here uh, responds to this movement and ad adapts its geometry. For uh, uh, The same happens for members. So I can click on this member and I can change its inclination. Let's change this to minus 40, for example. The member rotates, and again, the gusset adapts accordingly. So as a conclusion, the idea statical models can be easily and quickly adapted, and they can speed up the iterative design process of even uh, the most complex node. An additional question is, uh, why Kernan moved the members away in the first place? The reason is that this connection utilizes pins. Uh, now, the size of these pins is such that the weight of the biggest one is about 100 kilos. So to put these pins in place, Kernan uh, required additional space and they had to move members away from the node. Another important uh, aspect of this, uh, of this decision for, uh, for, uh, for connections made with pins is that Idea Statica does not support uh, pin calculation. But uh, Idea Statica is flexible enough to utilize this provision from the Eurocode where pin connections with no rotation can be designed as single bolted connections, provided that the length of the pin is le less than three times the diameter of the pin. And moving back. To the model, uh, all these pins have custom sizes, but Idea Statica is flexible enough. And if we move to the materials tab, uh, we can see here that Kiernan has defined a new bolt grade that corresponds to the bolt grade of the pins. We can see here the general name and the properties of the material including the yield strength and the ultimate tensile strength. So it is easy to create new materials, but uh, another important thing is that the user can save them and recall them later for further uh, use. Okay, I have already saved this one. And on top of that, you can create custom bolts and Kernan used them in a creative way and defined the custom diameters. If I select one of them, I can see that I can define the name, the custom bolt grid, and of course, the details of, of the pin. And so, uh, pin calculation is, well, is quite easy.
Uh, another important aspect that influenced the connection design was that the original proposal was using bad welds. This is what I was telling you that the bottom node was embedded in a CHS section with many bad welds. Now, the problem with bad welds is that they require a lot of preparation. And this means that a, play, a bat welded plate can take between half and the whole day of labor for uh, to be fully prepared. Then this plate needs to be tested. And if it fails, uh, the process needs to repeat once again. As a conclusion, bat welds were not the ideal solution under tight deadlines. And so Kernan had to limit the use. And this is why, we, if we look to the model from the top, we can see that uh, these incoming plates are bad welded, but the lateral plates have all uh, fillet welds, one sided fillet welds. Uh, they also have an allowance for welder access because it, they need to go inside, especially at these angles. And another aspect of this thing is that in idea statica models, it is very easy to modify welds. So in this complex model, the only thing I have to do is that I can point directly on my weld, right click on it, and I can scroll my the wheel of my mouse and the throat thickness is adapted accordingly. Or I can input the throat thickness directly. I can also influence the type of the weld and the material of the weld. Moving back to the connection, another major issue is that Kiernan had to deal with loads that were initially provided in a load table. Now, there's nothing wrong with the load tables, but uh, except from the fact that they contain extreme loads from envelopes. Now, for such a demanding connection, this would bring the material to its limit. And uh, this loading would potentially lead to a design dead end. So Idea Statica helped them to overcome this problem. And they worked closely with IACOM. IACOM provided loading tables for these members. The loading tables uh, contained critical loads, but they were not uh, they, they were not uh, they were not maximized at the same time. These load effects were imported using the XLS import feature. Here I can select all of them. Let me scroll down, and you can see that there are 92 load cases for this complex node. Uh, Lastly, Kernan had to communicate their design with uh, IACOM and other parties. To do so, they used Idea Statica creatively and uh, they took screenshots from the 3D model and created these drawings. Uh, what is important in this, from this point of view, is that all connections are quite complex, and the reason for this is that services pass through the roof, and uh, they need to they need to make sure that uh, access for maintenance would be possible. So they had to minimize all connection. 
connections. And for this reason, all of these connections are not typical. Uh, now, at the time of, uh, of the design, idea static, uh, at the time of the design, Kernan did not have available our latest tool, uh, one, one of our latest tools, which is the online viewer. So let me display this. Uh, so the engineer can communicate his design through an idea static project that can be displayed through a browser. So instead of creating and drawing, you can just provide a project file, which you can drag and drop into your browser. And then you can interrogate it through our online viewer. The online viewer is free to use. And if you want to interrogate the model, if one wants to interrogate it, he just needs to click, say, on this plate. And the properties of this plate are displayed. This is a drawing of the plate outline, its thickness, and its material. Or say that we need to interrogate this world. I can just click on it. And I can see its throat thickness and the defined material. Now, this type of communication saves a lot of time, especially in iterative design processes, and can speed up the uh, decision process the, for, uh, for complex connections. So that was it from my side. Now let me pass the presenter to Ryan, and he will discuss another aspect of this, uh, the cost aspect of this connection. All right, cheers, Costis. Right, so moving on to the cost control. Um, as a, a basic rule, the simple connections tend to be really easy to calculate how much they're going to cost. Uh, parties involved generally know how much these are going to cost um, out of the box. Now, this is not so much the case with the complex connections, and we can see on this project, almost all of these ended up being complex connections. So it makes it really important to consider the cost from an early stage. Now, with the release of the latest version of Ideastatica 20.1, we're able to, to very quickly and conveniently estimate uh, the costs of the complex connections from the beginning using the cost estimation feature. We've had some, some quite good feedback on how efficient or how effective this feature has been. Uh, so it, it takes into account the weight of all the materials in the connection and the price per kilogram from market data that we've we've taken and then that's customizable for your own market um, it's worth noting though that the the feature wasn't available at the time of uh, the current race course design uh, but it would have been a great asset on this project now before i show you how this works on idea statica i'd like to ask you all how much you think this particular node the top node uh, would have cost. So I'll open up the poll now and you can click on the range that you think this falls into. So the poll is now open. I'll give you about 20 seconds to answer this. Okay, so the numbers coming in, looks like most people would suggest that this comes in between 10,000 and 40,000 pounds. So let's see what uh, 
our cost estimation feature takes this to be. So you can see in the top right hand corner, we have um, £77,385. So for anyone that put over £70,000, uh, and that was only 4% of you, um, congratulations. But essentially, this feature allows you to adjust any component of the connection and it will update this production cost in real time. So if we take this gusset plate here and reduce its thickness from 80 mil to 70 mil, we can see that this production cost goes from 77,000 to 76,500. Now, again, this is all based off of market data that we've taken, but we encourage anyone who's using this feature to input their own values that uh, corresponds to the market that they're in. And this can quite simply be done via the settings tab and go to the cost section. First off, you can, you can turn this feature on and off, depending on how relevant that is to you and change the currency based on where you are. Then we can adjust the steel parts. So this is uh, any of the, the components of steel that exclude the members themselves. So we're talking plates, stiffening members and, and so on. So we can add a new price for a particular grade of steel. So there's one that we don't have. It's grade 450 and we can say that these are three pound per kilogram. Now we can do the same with welds and adjust these based on the throat thicknesses. We could say that anything over five mil costs 60 pound per kilogram, for example. Onto the bolts. Now this uh, takes into account both the diameter and the grade. So if we look at, let's say grade 8.8 .8 and M24 has a specific, or anything greater than a M24 has a specific price and we can call that three pounds per kilogram. And then hole drilling is taken into account by a percentage of the bolt assembly price. Okay, and again, this is adjustable. We can say that's only 20% in this case because uh, we know the market. So we can save all these changes that we've made as a new template. And if we know that all the projects uh, or most of the projects that we're working on will be using these figures, then we can just set that as default. And you might want to change uh, the templates based on different markets you might be involved in. So if you have some projects in Europe, some projects in Asia, these, probably, uh, these prices are obviously going to differ. So back to here. Now, just to put things into perspective, um, here is a scale picture of this particular node. Um, with This is a picture of uh, Michael Orr next to the road, uh, next to the node, who's the principal engineer from ACON, who presented this study to the iStruct E in Dublin. But to conclude uh, from this uh, presentation, what we've seen is that Idea Statica can greatly enhance the constructability assessment early in the design process. And it's able to put things into perspective by combining constructability, code checking, and cost, cost estimation. Now, again, I'd like to give a special thanks to Kian and Steele, and in particular, Miravano and Stephen for their contributions to this case study. Uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without uh, the data and the details that they've provided us. Now move on to Q&A section. So I believe most of these have been answered into the chat, um, although there's one that's come up. So uh, what do the small red bars at the end of the members mean, Costas? Okay, in, uh, in this case, let me share my screen first.
Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Maybe give me a minute. Let's see. Uh, okay. So there were some bars here, meaning that this connection is a connection that utilizes a single bolt. In this case, uh, when we have a complex loading pattern, uh, a mechanism may be created when there is a single bolt uh, connection. So in this case, we're utilizing a model type. Let me click on this member. We changed the model type. And this red line here is a type of constraint that prevents the creation of the mechanism in this in this particular case. Okay. Um, right. Next question. Does ideas that's good check the deflection as well? Uh, well. There is no particular requirement from the code for deflection checks. This is something that you should do in your global analysis software. Okay, idea static as connection design software, and although it can calculate complex connections, it applies the code provisions. We don't do something more than that. Uh, mm -hmm. So when if you if you if someone leak, if one needs to interrogate the deflections. He just needs to take results from idea static in case of moment connections, for example, the initial stiffnesses, etc. Apply them in the global analysis model and there calculate deflections. Okay, thank you. Um, when a model is shared through the online viewer, can it be downloaded as a BIM model? Well, not not yet, but what we could do is that uh, the the client I'm using the viewer right now, and I'm seeing what the, what your client sees. He can download a 3D DWG file. It's not a BIM file; it's a DWG file. But most modern softwares can uh, use this file. Okay. Uh, can you introduce pre-stress into the bolts? Yes, this is very easy. So let me click this pin, which is actually a custom bolt, and I can just set the shear force transfer method to friction. Okay. Um, when you run the analysis, are you able to see the stresses on the plate and the bolts? Of course. Well, I did some modifications and I lost the analysis here. But uh, yes, this is what Kiernan did. Cool. Uh, can you calculate the normal force displacement stiffness and introduce it in the beam statics? Uh, yes, this is very easy in Idea Statica. Uh, we can use our stiffness analysis, and uh, we can calculate. And this is something unique in Idea Statica. Uh, this is a side effect of the underlying FV engine we're utilizing, and we can uh, calculate this normal force force displacement, which is something that could be used in a global analysis model to calculate the deformations. Okay. Uh, was lamellar tearing taken into account when designing the cap plates for the incoming members? Well, uh, we do not have any information for this from Kernan, but I guess so. Cool. Okay, I think that may conclude our questions um 
There might be one more actually that's not been answered. Um, what's the design life and how will the maintenance be facilitated? Well, uh, this is something that I don't know, <laughs> but yes. uh, if if you need to have more information on this, again, I would strongly advise you to go to the YouTube channel of Vice Trustee Island and seek for the original presentation ma made by Mike Lore, the principal engineer of ICOM. Cool. Uh, and then, again, can we input the pre-stress manually or has it been set up in Idea Statica? Uh... I think that I'm missing something in this because from what I demonstrated previously, we're setting this manually, but maybe uh, they're asking about maybe the pretension factor, which is this value here. So these are aspects of the uh, of the slip resistance of the bolt, they influence the slip resistance. So I think that this was the question, probably. Okay. Uh, did the software carry out compression checks on the gusset plates? Well, the software is utilizing the CBFM methodology, so we do not uh separate compression and tension checks essentially the cbfm methodology is using a non-linear analysis a material non-linear analysis and checks uh the plastic strains we're limiting the plastic strains this is also something that is in eurocode 19 1993 -15. And uh, what was the other compression? And more than that, Idea Statica has a buckling analysis. You can perform a buckling analysis and uh, see what happens with uh, buckling, which is something due to compression. Okay. Uh, can the 0 0.7 preloading factor be modified? Uh, yes, of course. In the code setup, here, all these options are can be set by the user. Uh, okay, actually, back to the. So there's been a clarification of the input in the pre-stress manually. So this, she said, uh, meant pre-stress magnitude of the bolts. So can you input the pre-stress magnitude of the bolts manually? Uh, no, we can't directly uh, input the pre-stress magnitude, but I think that this is calculated indirectly from these values here. Cool. Because, uh, because this is how the code calculates them. Sorry for that. interrupting, Ryan. It's all right. Um, how can we see if buckling has been exceeded based on the results? Well, uh, to explain this, I need to, I should have prepared the buckling analysis. So this is something outside the scope of this webinar, but you can look this up in our support center, in our online support center, uh, where we can, we have FAQs that go into detail. Okay, I think there was a question about whether the client can make any changes to the model in the online viewer. No, this is why we call it a viewer. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> okay, I think that's all of our questions that have come through. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be anymore. So I'll say uh, thank you everyone for listening. And thanks, Costas, as well, for your input. Thank you to Ryan. And uh, yes, see you. See you next time. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye.